Hi and welcome to another Witch Doctor's How To. Today we're going to show you how to clean the intake on a, this is an 05 Kingpin. Um, a lot of the bikes are the same, the older like pre-08 bikes. Um, cleaning out the throttle bodies was an important thing. It, it, uh, your bike would start to idle bad and kind of run rough and cleaning the throttle bodies is what they recommended to, to help solve that. It's actually not a very hard job at all. Uh, so I'm going to show you what to do. This is, like I said, this is an 05 Kingpin, and we have a lot of stuff off on this bike already. So if you see in some of the camera shots, stuff is off. It's not because you have to do it. It's just this bike's here, and we're making this video for that. But the first thing you got to do is you got to take the seat off. So, so you know, remove the seat. That's nothing really hard. Um, but the second thing to get the gas tank off, you have these straps up in the front. These, these rubber covers, you just kind of pull these covers off, they just pop right off and pull those covers off, um, set them aside. You got an eight millimeter Allen bolt and you have this on each side of the tank. I'm just gonna show you this side, but you do the same thing on the other side. So what you're gonna wanna do is just take that bolt out. And like I said, again, on the other side, you got the same thing. Take that bolt out and then in the back, once you get the seat off, you have this bolt here that holds your tank on. It's the same thing, it's an 8 millimeter bolt. So unscrew that bolt, take that off and then you'll see the gas tank is loose then. So like I said, once you get the other one off on the front, on the other side, gas tank's loose. So once you get it loose, it's a, it's a good idea to do this when the, when the tank's basically empty um, because it gets pretty heavy. So try to do it, you know, run your gas tank down to uh, almost empty when you do that. Makes it, makes it a lot lighter, a lot easier to, to handle. Uh, and this is also something if you have a buddy that can help hold that. Is underneath and I'll show you I try to show you underneath but there's a connect couple connectors you have to do you have to disconnect the electrical connector for the fuel pump and you also have to disconnect the fuel line which is just a little tiny hose clamp and on a lot of the bikes they have a vent hose which is just a, a vacuum hose you just pull it off nothing fancy there so let me get this so you can see underneath and I'll show you what to do okay I got a camera angle so you're gonna be able to see underneath the gas tank here one thing you might want to do just as a safety is um, disconnect your battery, you know, just so you, if you get any sparks since you're working with gas and stuff, if you would happen to bump something, you won't get any sparks. So just disconnect your battery to be on the safe side. The other thing is um, that when you take the gas line off the bottom of the tank, you're going to get a little bit of gas that runs out. It's not going to drip out like, you know, constantly pouring out because of, you know, gas in the tank. The fuel pump has to be on to pump the gas. So you're just going to get a little bit running out. So make sure you have a rag or something to kind of catch that gas when it does that. Uh, you know, just so it's not dripping. And don't have, don't do this on a hot engine because you don't want that gas on dripping onto the exhaust or onto the hot engine. So make sure the engine's nice and cool, cool um, when you're doing this. And it makes it easier. You won't get burned. So let's raise up the tank and I'll show you what we got, what we're working on here. If you look right here, this is your little hose clamp for the fuel line. That's the main fuel line right there. Up underneath here a little farther, and what I'll do is a lot of times this gas line is really tight. You won't give you any room. So you want to just take that hose clamp and loosen that hose clamp up and kind of work it down. It's, it's kind of hard to do because you don't have much room in your hand. That's why you, if you have somebody else to hold the gas tank up for you, if you don't have anybody to hold it, you can maybe wedge a 2x4 or something in here. That clamp down. And then just twist that hose off. And it could be hard sometimes. you got to pry a little bit on it. There. That hose will come right off. And like I say, sometimes gas will drip out of here. Now you can raise the tank up a little bit more. And we'll try to show you here. This is your fuel pump connector right here. 
and you, you'll see a little tab. There's a little tab right here. And the way you get this connector apart, just get a screwdriver, a little tiny screwdriver, and f flip that little tab up. It's kind of hard to show you, but if you flip that little tab up and pull, the connector will come right apart. So that's all you got to do there. This is your vacuum hose. It actually came apart when we raised up the tank, but it goes right here. Some bikes have that, some don't. So that's, um, just pull that off and, and you're good to go. But that's all there is. You take that, the hose off, take your connector off, and then you'll be able to raise the gas tank and get it out of the way. You got to jiggle it a little bit because it sticks on the front, but and that's again why if the tank's um, not so heavy, it'll come right off. Makes it easier. There you go. That's all there is to it, removing the gas tank. Now what we're going to work on is the air box right here. I'm going to take off these screws here and we're going to get down into the throttle bodies. That's where we're going to be working next. Okay, so now that we got the fuel tank off, like I said, we're going to just take these screws out here. They're just Phillips head screws. What happens with these throttle bodies, you get carbon and soot and a little bit of oil film and stuff built up in there and the air doesn't flow through them right anymore and the butterflies don't, um, they don't work right so they get carboned up and it just doesn't run. So I'll try to show you what you got down in here is you have these plastic tubes. They just kind of pop out, you got to kind of finagle them out of there but they just kind of twist out. So you just pull those things out of there. Now, what you can see down in here, this is your throttle bodies. One there and one here. When I move the throttle, you'll see them open. You can see them moving there. That's what you're trying to clean. You're trying to clean down inside around here because they'll get sooted up. Sometimes when you take this apart you'll see they're going to be super black in there, super dirty, um, and that's what we're trying to do. So I'll get my cleaner here and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to spray these out. We carry a product called Pure Power Plus. Um, I sell this. It's, it's not, I'm not making a sales pitch, but this stuff works phenomenal. There's a lot of stuff you could buy at the parts store. But you want to get something called throttle body cleaner and you want it to be in an aerosol, a spray, and you also want to make sure that you have this little tube, make sure it comes with that so you can reach down inside there and spray them out good. One thing we get asked all the time is the fuel injection cleaner um, that you dump in the gas tank. That doesn't have anything to do with cleaning these. That's cleaning the fuel injectors themselves, the valves, that type of thing. That is not what we're doing here. So what you want to do um, and with our kit, you want to take, um, I just have an old toothbrush, some sort of soft little bristle brush that you can get down in there and spray and uh, scrub it once you spray it. But just kind of spray these out. You might want to wear some safety glasses so you don't get hit in the eyes because this stuff will absolutely um, hurt. You know, you get it in a cut, this is some stronger stuff. So just kind of swish the brush in there and you'll, you'll see the, the carbon just start coming right off. This cleaner is phenomenal. It, it makes the job very easy. Um, you don't have to scrub very hard at all. So basically um, do that. It's hard to see but in the side here there's a couple little bleed holes. That's where you want to kind of take your hose and put it in there and shoot a little bit inside those bleed holes too. Get those cleaned out. I say it's kind of hard to show you here. But put that hose in there. Okay. So you got a lot of that fluid sitting in there. You can see it kind of bubbling as it's cleaning. I like to just kind of stick a rag because you don't want to fill the motor with, uh, 
you know, all this liquid. You don't want to go crazy. So I try to soak some of it out. You want to open up the throttle, get it all the way open. You can see, I don't know if you can see it on this one here, but it's pretty black, you know, and you'll see that stuff just takes it right off. It just takes it right off. So you want to spray those out real good. Make sure you spray the back side of these throttle plates as well, you know, not just the top. Spray where the pivot, where it goes through. I'm gonna get that, get all the sides, because a lot of times you kind of stand in one area and you miss a lot of it. Once you get that sprayed, I like to take a little bit, just spray a little bit on my brush and stick it down in there. And just be careful, you don't, you don't want to be super aggressive, but just be careful and reach down in there and scrub it. Like I say, make sure you get the back, rinse it off a little bit. One thing you don't want to do is drop your toothbrush down inside the motor. That wouldn't be good. So once you get it all scrubbed out, just give it kind of a final rinse and then you can close the throttle and then wipe out any you know extra that's up in here you don't need compressed air or anything like that this stuff will evaporate you know it takes a little little longer than normal but it will evaporate so you don't have to really worry about it and you can see pretty good there. I'll try to zoom in for you, but you can see pretty good now how clean those throttle bodies are. They're, uh, you don't see any carbon at all on them. It cleans them out really good. You can see down in there, everything's nice and clean. So what we're going to do next is uh, those, those plastic tubes that we took out, we're going to put those in next because that's basically all you're doing is on the cleaning. Um, probably should have checked these which ones went in but you just got to kind of feel them and get them back in there and I guess out of this whole job this is probably the biggest pain in the butt part is getting these back in there. I don't know an easier way to do this. Some other guys may, once they see this video, chime in and <coughs> say how. Okay, so we can get it popped down in there. And you just gotta kind of feel for it. And it'll go. Once it hits that spot, it goes right in. You can see it, it'll drop right in there. So just push that back down in there so it's kind of tight. You know, you'll feel it go in and stop. So that's all there is basically to that. We're going to put the cover back on, put the screws in. And that just kind of, you know, just like you took it off, put the screws back in. This job should probably take you, if you have halfway decent mechanical skills, I'd say this whole job would take you maybe an hour to do. You know, like I say, you don't need any fancy tools. Obviously, you see me doing it just regular screwdrivers and sockets and stuff, but you don't need anything fancy. You don't need to lift the bike up on a jack or anything like that. You can do it right on the ground. One tip is a lot of guys do this kind of at the same time as you do your tune-up you know you want to change your plugs or your wires you want to make sure you change your spark plugs after you clean this stuff out 
because what happens is all that junk that we just sprayed is down inside the motor now. If you put brand new spark plugs in there and you start the bike up, all that junk is going to blow right on the spark plugs. So use your old spark plugs um, you know, to start the bike up. Get the bike warm, get all that stuff burned out. And it may be a little bit hard to start at first because it's, it's like flooded with that spray. So it, keep that in mind. It may not start right on the first you know, time you hit the button. You may have to crank it a little bit and kind of get that stuff flushed through. But do that first, get it running, get it up to operating temperature, get it warm, get that stuff burned out, make sure everything's good. And then once you're all done with that, then go back and put your new spark plugs in so everything's fresh. That's a big mistake people always make. They change their plugs first and then clean that and then blow the junk all over the brand new spark plugs. So basically, that's all there is to it. Um, you're gonna put your gas tank back on, You know, hook your connectors back up, the hose, everything's just the same, just in the reverse order. Um, put your put your um, electrical connector on first. You know that's your fuel pump connector here. Put that on first. Then put your gas line on. Get everything tight. Put your bolts back in your tank, and that's all there is to it. So thanks for watching, Witch Doctor's How To.